Okay, hello, uh, William Murphy here, and this is my second YouTube channel. Uh, this channel is going to be aimed more predominantly at fixing things, making a little bit of money, hopefully, um, and just general chit chat, really. Uh, if you don't subscribe to my first channel, that is William Murphy Golf, head over and click that subscribe button if you can, um, and ultimately click subscribe on this one too. Uh, hopefully this is going to be aimed at trying to help you save a little bit of money and ways that you can hopefully um, turn your hobby into something else. Um, so I have just finished near enough building this bike. Uh, this is my old bike. It was a little bit small for me and I decided that um, enough was enough. I would get a new frame and change everything from one bike to the other. Turns out you can't really do that. So. Um, I've had to get a few new parts, and now, ultimately, this is ready, apart from the seat post, to go ahead. So, getting some inspiration now, really, from one of my favourite TV programmes called Wheeler Dealers, uh, I have now set about a new project. So, provided some installment. Oh, let's have a look. Here it is. Oh. Let's get this in the garage. Oh. So basically, I went onto the internet um, on a website called Spock, which is a the mobile boot sale app. Oh. That needs some oil. So basically, I went onto Spock, which is a mobile boot sale app, and I found this Carrera Velour bike, mountain bike, for £30. Um, I offered them a little bit less and managed to get it for £25. So um, basically my goal is to change this bike which the brakes don't work, the front suspension is a little bit iffy, um, the gears don't work into something where I can actually say I've made a profit. Um, I'm not going to go for silly money and just fix a few bits and say I'm going to sell it for £1,000 because that's just not realistic. Um, so it's £25 um, doing the gears, doing the brakes, um, and a few other bits and pieces to make it sort of usable. You know, if I can, if I can make a little bit of money um, and someone has a good bike, then that is the, obviously the job done. So, uh, yeah, let's get involved. Okay, so here it is. Right, this is the Carrera Velour. Um, I managed to pick it up relatively cheap. Um, having actually looked at it a little bit further now, I can sort of understand the reasons maybe why. Um, let's talk okay, you so that. let's start at the rear then. So the rear wheel, I can shake it like this and there's play. So the bearing that goes through the middle of the wheel, there's play in that. So the bearings are gonna have to either be replaced or look into getting a new wheel. It has a disc on it, but there's no caliper. Um, there's also no mount here to mount a caliper. So we actually still have the V-brakes. And the V-brakes work off the pads touching the side of the wheel to slow it down. Now these rims here don't actually look like they're compatible for these type of brakes. So I'm gonna look into it and see um, whether it's more cost effective to get a, a, a caliper bracket and a caliper or a new wheel with the capability to house these V brakes. It has a nine speed disc on the back, I think they're called a cassette. Now my knowledge of bikes here isn't very good, so I'm just learning as I'm going. So it's got nine speed there, and only a seven speed shifter at the top. So again, if I look at getting a different wheel, I look at one with already has a seven speed uh, cassette on the back. Uh, the chain has seen better days, it looks a little bit rusty. I might try and clean that up, but the price of the chains aren't particularly expensive, and actually I think that the Maybe resale for a bike with a new chain, new brakes, etc., etc., will probably be better than having one that isn't, uh, it's just maybe been cleaned. Uh, moving forward, thankfully, the pedals didn't actually feel that bad. But then, seeing that the, ch the chain is that seized, it has a big lump right in the middle of it. So, the pedals go around quite freely, which is quite good. There's no play that I can feel in the bottom bracket, which is the bracket that goes between this pedal arm and the other pedal arm. That's pretty good. I've got uh, a bolt for the seat post. The seat is all pretty good. There's no rips or tears in that. 
Moving further forward to the front wheel. Now the front tire is completely flat, so what I'm gonna do is the first job, I'm gonna take this front wheel off, put an inner tube in there, pump it up and see if I can get any pressure in that wheel. Uh, it feels maybe like there could be minor bit of play in the front, but again, until that was done, the shocks feel pretty seized. It did actually come with this other set of shocks with uh, a brake caliper included, uh, which the pads are still in there so they can get a bit of a clean up. So if I'm gonna go for a disc conversion, then I can use this. If not, I actually have this shock or fork that I had lying around from a previous bike that I had a few years back that has the V-brake capability and also a caliper, at the, the bracket for the caliper at the back. So, these feel pretty seized. The ones provided also feel pretty seized, so it's looking like possibly I could be using these ones here. Now they're really good suspension. I just, for some reason, changed them on an old bike. Um, I can't work out if there's any play in the uh, headset until this tire is done. So first job, wheel off. Let's sort this tire out. Okay, so if you're familiar with the quick release setup, you have a bolt that goes through the side, and all you do is lift it up, it could be a little bit stiff. You can unwind it slightly, we're holding the other side, unwinding this, and the wheel, he says, should just slot out. And there we go, the wheel is off. If you're running a V-brake setup, just make sure you disconnect this cable here, which has already been disconnected. So this is the rest of the bike down to one side. And take a look at this wheel. So the disc's on there. The disc looks okay, to be honest. Um, the wheel itself looks all right. It looks like it's had a bit of uh, maybe repair paint to the top. Uh, could be possibly just been chipped. So let's get the tire off and then see where we are at. So to get the tire off, you can do a number of things. Especially with a tire this flat, it's a little bit easier. You can just pull the tire over the rim and pull it off. It will stay supported on the valve. Just undo the valve. In this case, a nice pretty black. There's Hell's Angels? Comment below, I don't know. Um, so yeah, comment below what that is. I have no idea. Anyway, that is the inner tube and tire off, separated, done. Put the wheel to one side, pull the tire straight from the rim. Let's put some air in it. Okay, so no matter what I do with this one, on the valve here, so that, if I just pull it, it'll probably just come off. Yeah, no good. The valve and the inner tube, gone. Thankfully, up here I have a few spares. Look at these slime inner tubes. They have uh, a chemical inside. Actually, when you rotate the wheel, if you have a puncture, it'll seal that hole. Um, these are brand new as well. So happy days. Let's just open that up. Oh. Put a tiny bit of air inside. I find that helps when you try and seek it on the rim. Not much, that's absolutely fine. You can still move it around. Now on tires, I guess it matters really. This is for cars as well, but rotation. So if you can see this at all, on the side of the rim here, can I see that? Oh, I can't even see that. There's an arrow. Just here, it says rotation this way, which means the wheel has to turn this way here. Now, the disc was mounted to the left. So with the disc mounted to the left, the rotation going forwards, I can put the wheel back on this way. And we're done. Get my pump. Ooh. 
Can't really see it in this, can you? And just pump it up. Put the wheel back on the bike, and then we can test the front suspension. And this is just the opposite of what I've done previously. Wow. Okay. Ooh. So that is the tire now done. That suspension Ooh. Ooh. is pretty solid. So uh, I think a bit of lubrication around the shaft and hopefully that will then go a little bit easier. But size wise, I'd ride this, I'm quite happy on this. So a little WD-40. And there we have it. Suspension, albeit a little bit rusty, uh, needs a little bit of attention, is now free. But if you're riding a bike up and down curbs, absolutely spot on. To give you a bit of an idea, this is obviously the one I just bought. This is like I just finished, and a bit more of an easy spring back up. Front tyre in the tube is now sorted, suspension is now free. I can check out any play in the headset. So, let's hold the tyre into our legs, hold on the frame and rock it back and forth, and I'm trying to feel for any play here and down here. And actually, I can't feel any at all. Nope, spot on. Uh, next thing to do, check for any play in that wheel. Which, to be honest, I can't feel there either. Okay, so actually this bike here, it looks like the gearing for both front and back run underneath the frame down to the back. So if I had a bike frame, I could just hold the bike up absolutely fine, but I've got to do it by hand. So just going through, selecting the gears. Now what I'm doing here is making sure checking see if there's any movement in here. That's my middle gear. Which to be honest, absolutely nothing. Now on the back gears. I'm actually getting a bit of gear movement there. It's a little bit stiff to try and get into the gear. Another gear. That should be my top gear now. So I've gone all the way through. I'm now at the highest gear, or the lowest gear. Okay, so holding the wheel, I can try and shake it side to side and see if you can see any movement there. You see that tire moving? And the bike frame is actually pretty still. 
it's moving. Now if I grab the gear as well, I can actually wobble that. So I don't know if that's supposed to happen. I imagine possibly not. So the gears work on the back, which is good. Let's see about this middle here. Now, the cable runs down the frame underneath, up through this gap here, into this mechanism. Now what it's supposed to do is you change it, it's supposed to shift one way and then the other, depending on which gear you're in, either the top gear, the middle gear, or the bottom gear. With this bracket being completely, oh, hang on, got a bit of movement there, you see that? That's what you're supposed to have, that movement. Now that's supposed to happen when you change the gear, so if I give that a bit of a lubrication, hopefully that will start moving. A bit of WD-40 on any moving parts. And with any luck, that'll be a little bit freer. It might take a little while to, to work and to get it sort of working, but it's actually a lot more easier to move now just by hand. Okay, so I've got no brakes, but I have put air in the front and the back tire, and I've oiled the gears. So I guess the only thing to do is to go up and down and see if we can get the gears working properly, along with trying to improve that suspension. You can see where it's gone a little bit darker. That is where the suspension is now moving to. It's got a bit of travel. Um, so not overdo it, but it's looking pretty good to start with. For this though, helmet's going on. I'll be back. Yes, fixed. Right, suspension is sorted. The gearing needs attention to still. I think new cables and a lot and lot of uh, moving back and forwards, some lubrication at WD-40 or other. The gearing wants to work, but the chain is a little bit stiff. So a new chain, some new cables, and I think we're onto a winner here. Oh. And of course, I didn't show this you earlier. Some new grips are required because they are a smooth as a shaved badger. <laughs> <laughs> 